What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down two tips for quarterbacks to improve their throwing velocity over the middle and how they can get their deep ball throws to turn over and get that nice arc to drop that thing in the bucket for the wide receiver. So we're going to talk about some positives and negatives, some good examples, and some bad examples from quarterbacks. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it teaches you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a QB and you want to get some work in with us this offseason, we have one more remaining quarterback and wide receiver training camp. We are going to be finishing off our quarterback and wide receiver camp tour in Los Angeles, California on July 30th and 31st. We're in Salt Lake City right now and it was a great turnout. We appreciate everybody that attended, but for this LA camp is our last one until December, fellas. So check out that very first link in the description below. If you're interested in that, we would absolutely love to have you out. Let's get started with this video. So first clip here is from a quarterback and I want to talk a little bit about an overstride and a common misconception that people think that comes to arm strength. And then we're obviously going to be breaking down Aaron Rodgers, who does it very well. Well, so when we go to throw an uh, old school method of how you guys can get power is people would say you want to push off of the inside arch of your back foot. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was one of those guys. The quarterback position is constantly evolving. And as a coach, it is our job to constantly evolve with the position. If there's a new and there's a better way to do things and you see guys doing things that work for them, you have to evolve as a coach. You can't be closed minded and think, oh, this is the only way to do it because it can limit velocity. So a lot of people say, oh, push off the middle arch of your foot. But sometimes when you push off of your foot, this can happen where your back leg extends out. Now, when your back leg extends like this, that prevents hip rotation. When you're throwing a football, the key to being able to get velocity, the key to power on the throw is all about your hips. You guys have all probably seen Dak Prescott do that, you know, warm up hip walk or that QB walk as some people call it. That's essentially what this is working on. Because when you guys throw, it's a lot like a golf swing. It's a lot like a baseball swing. I'm not a baseball guy. I'm not a golf guy, but it's all about torque. It's all about separating your hips and your shoulders. You want your hips to rotate through to the target as your shoulders stay back. And Aaron Rodgers is a great example of that that we're going to show in a second. But you want your hips to drive through, shoulders stay back, and the arm just kind of flies behind. There's like that torque to it. Just like how in a baseball swing, you step with your front foot, your shoulders stay back, you pivot off that back foot, and the hips bring the bat through just like that. It's, but the football is considered the bat, if you will. So when you push off of this back foot, what ends up happening is usually you have a decently long stride. So when your front stride gets in the ground, it's usually kind of far outside your frame. Now you look at his back foot, it's extended. It is impossible to rotate through at your hips when you have that long stride. Your front hip tends to lock out. You won't be able to rotate because your feet are too far outside of your frame. And that's solely from pushing off of that inside arch. What I like to teach my quarterbacks a lot to do is don't think of it like you're pushing off of the arch. Think of it like you're shifting weight from back quad or your back glute to the front leg to get your front hip to open up. And we're going to talk about that, like I said, in the next example. But when we push off of this, fellas, when we push off of this foot and I'm extending out with the front stride, you have no power from your hips. As QBs, we are rotational athletes. We are either going to rotate from one or two places, the hips or the shoulders. So when you don't rotate from your hips, what ends up happening is, is that you're going to swing this front shoulder. So you might swing the elbow down, you might swing the front shoulder around, whatever it is, but this shoulder is going to rotate. Now, the issue with this is that can it cause a flawed release point? So in the days of like, oh, everybody talks a lot about arm slots and oh, if you have a wider arm slot or a sidearm of quote unquote sidearm arm slot, that oh, that's the way the game's played today and all this stuff. It's like, yes and no. Because when you guys have to throw maybe around somebody and you're trying to fit it into a tight window, that's when you want to change up the arm slot. You, you want to keep your arm slot natural. The problem I have is when you have a flawed front side, that can create a flawed release point where your arm goes outside of your frame. So when you guys are throwing and you don't have that hip rotation because of the quick front stride, because of the weight transfer, you're pushing off the back foot so everything gets real wide, you pull the front elbow maybe down, you pull the front shoulder open, and that flaws the release. Whatever your front side does, the release is going to do the same thing. So if you guys are here and the elbow gets pulled down, your body, you want to think of it like there's a line going down the middle. When you pull down with the elbow, what do you think your release is going to do? get pushed high. If you pull the shoulder around, what do you think the release is going to do? Get pushed wide. Now, again, 
this doesn't guarantee that all oh, the throw is going to be off because you can get very good at a bad habit. And as you see on this throw, it's to him. It's a completion, but it's not going to be consistent. There's always that one, 2%, 5% that you can do better on if he would have taken maybe a quicker stride, got his hips to shoot through and let go on the ball. Now, another reason you want to try to get your hips more involved with the throw and you don't want to have that long stride where your feet go outside your frame is that when your hips don't rotate and your shoulders swing through as a source of power, you see how his shoulder and his elbow are leading his hip. When that happens, that puts a ton of stress on your elbow and on your shoulder. A lot of young quarterbacks hurt themselves by doing exactly that. You want to try again. If that quick stride would have gotten down, and maybe that stride would have gotten down there as that shoulder was closed, right? Instead of taking a longer stride to where it strikes when the shoulders are open, if that whole front foot would have gotten down there and those hips were able to rotate through instead of pushing off the back foot, it was more of like a weight shift and those hips go through before the arm, there's no stress on your arm that you're throwing that ball all with your legs and all with your hips. So let's play this full speed. And then we're going to go into that clip of Aaron Rodgers and show you guys what you would kind of want to do in that situation. Now you see when Rodgers goes to throw, I'm not saying that your stride has to be that quick. All I want you guys to pay attention to is when that front stride gets down, where are his shoulders? His shoulders are closed, and I want you guys to watch his back foot. So let's play this thing full speed. So when he goes here, this is a great example of how you guys can get velocity because obviously that throw has a ton of velocity. It's a back shoulder fade. I'm going to play it again one more time. And it's all based on his hips and his hip and shoulder dissociation. So when he goes to throw, you see front stride is not long. It doesn't even look like he's pushing off the back foot at all. It looks like he is shifting that weight. Both of his feet are inside of his shoulder frame. And now when he goes to transfer his weight, I want you to watch what his back foot does. Does the back foot ever extend? No, it's almost like it, he pivots off of the toe. I'm not saying you have to pivot off the toe, but fellas, if it's a quick stride and you could take that weight that we have loaded on my back leg, because you hear a lot of quarterback coaches nowadays say, hey, keep your weight back, which is great. And you can shift that weight through to the outside part of that front leg. What do you think your front hip's going to do? Front hip's going to come open. What do you think your back hip's going to do? It's going to go through before the football. And that takes stress off the elbow, takes stress off the shoulder. But now... Like I said in the very beginning, as quarterbacks, we are rotational athletes. So when you transfer this weight, guess what's going to rotate? Your hip is going to rotate. Because now if his front stride would have been maybe like six more inches out in front of him, and again, this may seem real technical for a lot of guys, but it's not that big of a change. If you got this real long stride, you physically cannot rotate with your hips. I want all of you, you could try this right now. Stand with your feet super wide and try to rotate. You physically can't do it. Your front hip locks out. But when you close your feet down, you can easily rotate at your hips. That's all it should take for you guys to understand the quickness of the stride and where the stride needs to be. So now let's talk about release point. His hips rotate through. So guess what his front side doesn't have to do? Front elbow doesn't have to pull down. Front shoulder doesn't need to swing open. He could keep his hips and his shoulders completely square to the target. So now look at his release point. His release point, again, he's got maybe a higher or maybe a wider arm slot than a lot of people but still it's not outside of his frame. If this elbow or this hand couldn't get to extension, this is extension, that flick of the wrist. He wouldn't be able to get to extension if that elbow was swinging down. The release would be pushed up. If he swung the shoulder all the way around towards these fans, his release point would be here and he'd be coming across. If the front side were to swing out here, he'd be coming across with that release point, which would not allow him to get to extension solely because that front stride if is would be too long. Like if the front stride was too long, he would need to swing the front shoulder out of there. He would need to pull open, which would cause the release to widen because that's the only way we can rotate. Fellas, as quarterbacks, like I've said in the past, it is about being a rotational athlete. How can you get those hips to rotate through, not necessarily rotate with the shoulders because that's what can flaw the release point. And again, we can get very good at a bad habit, but it's not efficient. As quarterbacks, again, it's the mechanics of the position. Yeah, they might seem complicated at times, but as soon as you get it down, it's pretty easy 
easy to understand what you did wrong, what may have happened in this situation, why we missed here, why we missed there. And as QBs, we're always searching for that extra one, two percent, especially guys at the level Aaron Rodgers, college quarterbacks. They're they're always very good. If you're playing if you're playing quarterback at a high level high school, if you're going to play quarterback in college, your quarterback in the league, even you're on the practice squad, you are very, very talented. But it's that extra one to five percent that will separate guys. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Then we're going to talk about how you guys can get the nose of that football to turn over on that deep ball by using that hip rotation. So we're going to look at this clipper from Brady. And so when he throws this ball, I want you to notice how the nose of that football perfectly comes down. Now, so many QBs struggle to get the football to finish like this. What they will do is they will throw it and that ball will be like this, but it comes down exactly like that. It just stays at that angle all the way down. So that has a lot to do with hip rotation and extension. So let's play this thing to the very beginning. So when you guys are throwing a deep ball and you're taking like a three-step drop and a hitch, so many QBs, like let's say this is your third step of the drop right here. And again, some of you might be doing a shuffle drop. Some of you might do like kind of a backpedal type drop, whatever it is, that's completely fine. But when you guys are in this position where you have this weight on your front foot and you're here at the top of your drop, it is so important important that you shift the weight back. You see how Brady is heavy on the front foot here? And then he shifts the weight back to where now he's heavy on the back foot, light on the front foot. Because this is the, and he shifts his upper body back as well. It's not just about the feet. It's about like almost rocking your weight back. Because when you could get to here, back foot is underneath your back shoulder. That is the position that will allow you to get your hips to rotate through. So we talked a little bit about in the very first example, how you get more velocity. You don't want to push off of the back foot. Because when you push off the back foot, your base gets super wide. So a good pre-throw position is to have have this back foot under that shoulder so it makes it easier to shift weight from the back quad, the back glute, not necessarily push off of the foot. And you're in a good, powerful position where you could take that quick front stride and shift the weight because that ties into getting the nose of the football to turn over. Usually when the nose doesn't turn over, it's because of a fraud, flawed front side, like in the first example we saw. So when Brady goes to throw, you see he's able to shift that weight. You see how it's not a push off of the foot. Watch what his quad does. His quad shifts through. And now when he shifted his weight back to that back foot, that front shoulder was able to arc. So now when you could get that back hip rotating through before the ball, the front hip opening up and your upper half can stay square, hips and shoulders square to the target. All it takes is a snap of that wrist at the top to get the nose of the football to turn over. So fellas, if you struggle getting the nose of that football to turn over, it comes down to lack of hip rotation and a disciplined front side or an undisciplined front side that can flaw the release point. All the things that we just talked about, that's what ties into it. Because imagine if Brady were here and let's say he took this hitch, but that front stride didn't get down right now. You can tell by his knee that his front stride is down. Let's say the front stride took forever to get down. What do you think his front hip would do? His front hip wouldn't be able to open. So to get power and to get air on the ball, he would probably take that front elbow and swing down. And so when your front elbow swings down, you know your release point gets flawed, it gets pushed up high, and you're like pushing the ball. It's almost like a shot put. And that's why the nose won't turn over. Or you might swing the front side this way, and your arm will widen outside of the frame. It's not about arm slot. It's not about sidearm. It's about being inside or outside of your frame and having control with the front side. So fellas, to get that nose of the football to turn over, you've got to remember, let's shift that weight back like Brady does in this example. You want to shift the weight back so I can arc my shoulder. I can transfer that weight to get my front hip to open, my back hip to drive, and that ball can trail behind and I could stay square with the upper half so I can get to extension with my release to get the nose to turn over. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. This is a textbook example of how you want to take a hitch in the pocket and be able to drive that ball to turn the nose over. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If uh, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to uh, leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come out to our last remaining quarterback and wide receiver training camp in Los Angeles, California, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.